Welcome to our Saturday simulcast after Purdue's uh, crushing 32-29 loss to uh, Syracuse uh, at the uh, JMA Wireless Dome. Tom Deanhart and Brian Newbert joined me. Tom in the press box still at the JMA Wireless Dome, and we will hit that. I want to thank also the Union Club and the Boiler Up Bar, the 811 uh, Bistro, and all the folks that uh, with the Purdue Union Club Hotel and all the support that they give us. All right, guys, this is a, this is about as a ch challenging a game to explain as any that I can remember, um, dig digging back through that. But, Tom, uh, maybe first talk about Jeff Brom uh, in post game today, just uh, what you took from his comments and and maybe try to start to put this game into perspective. Yeah, I know. Like you said, well, I mean, where do you begin, Alan? There's so many yeah, things yeah, trying, yeah. trying to get your hands around. Of course, topic number one is, of course, we're, we're the penalties, as you would suspect, right? 13 yeah. penalties today. Um, I think, what is it, 110 yards. Uh, we saw a lot of this in the Penn State game, and uh, they sort of got it cleaned up last week, but it reared its ugly head today in, in very untimely fashion, especially, of course, that last drive of the game where, Syracuse went and covered that 50 yards uh, to score the winning touchdown. So penalties from guys who, who should know better, right? Just undisciplined stuff from fifth-year seniors, uh, not just on that last drive in the fourth quarter, but even throughout the game, I think of Jack Sullivan's late hit out of bounds. Yeah. Uh, kept the Syracuse drive going. But I don't want to keep calling people out. But, again, um, they're, they're just things you wouldn't think that a, a veteran team would uh, – would be still stumbling with at this point. So, yeah, just, you know, talking in the press box, guys, uh, as far as tough losses go, I think this one ranks up there in the annals of all-time Purdue, uh, Purdue uh, tough ones to swallow. Uh, I'd like to get your perspective on that. But, again, um, twice now in three weeks we've seen Purdue seemingly let one get away. Penn State scored a touchdown with 57 seconds left to beat the Boilers September 1st. Today – Syracuse covers 50 yards and scores the winning touchdown with seven seconds to go. All Purdue had to do, guys, was protect a lead for 51 seconds. They had to score a touchdown to win, and Syracuse was able to do it. So, again, they were assisted ably, again, by, by these Purdue missteps with, with all the penalties that, that really were, were ruinous today, honestly. To put, I, can't, I can't put it any other way, but say ruinous. Yeah. Brian, uh, your perspective, I know you wrote in the last word uh, – yeah, uh, pretty much put it in perspective, but it was uh, was pretty monumental. Yeah, I have some broad points to make, but I also – what's going on in the last play of the game where – why are you in man? Why is Chris yeah. Jefferson playing around the line of scrimmage? I mean, you make them throw the ball in the middle of the field. They probably have three or four seconds left when they do that. They use a timeout, and then they have one more play. Um, you have a bunch of guys back in a deep zone. I, I, that just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but – you know, everything that led up to that was, you know, just classic, uh, a team that hasn't really found ways to win yet, um, but rather found ways to lose. Now, I understand that Purdue won. I'm, I'm not I'm not taking the M Music City Bowl out of this equation. That was obviously a back and forth game that Purdue found a way to win at the end. That was a shootout. That was as much pinball as it was football. It feels like when Purdue gets in these back and forth games when you just have to make the right play at the right time. You just have to make the big tackle. You just have to not hurt yourself with the wrong penalty at the wrong time, things like that. That's still where they kind of struggle. You know, Purdue's really good when they're able to put a lot of points on the board, when they're able to make big plays and, and all that stuff. But when they get in these, you know, tight fourth quarters and they have to execute offensively and they have to just not beat themselves, you know, that's where they've, uh, not shown up necessarily uh, this season thus far because the Penn State game was there for the taking. The Syracuse game was won. It was won. And, uh, you know, the one thing you really couldn't do there was give them 30 yards and penalties off of off of the kickoff and give them half a field. You still shouldn't have given up the touchdown, too, but you also couldn't have them start that drive at the 50. It's just classic. Um, a classic example of a team finding ways, manufacturing ways to get beat. Yeah. You know, one of the things too, Aiden O'Connell and, and Charlie Jones, it was terrific. You know, you're down 25-15, and this may make it even more difficult is the way that Purdue came back 
And the way that Aiden O'Connell after the pick six, uh, you know, makes a he's allowed to make a mistake now. And then I thought he was really good. And obviously Charlie Jones was as well. But Tom, that uh, that adds insult to injury about the kind of performance those two guys put up late in that football game. Yeah, look at the numbers, Alan. Like you said, uh, Aiden O'Connell passes for 424 yards, 39 to 55, three touchdowns in that one interception. Um, Jeff Rom, I asked him after the game, you know, about that play, and he just said, you got to eat it. And, and Penn, uh, Syracuse is bringing more pressure in the second half, he said. And they yeah. were throwing the ball more. Too. They, said, they said they really struggled to run in the second half, so they had to turn to the pass a little bit more. So, yeah, Aiden O'Connell obviously acquitted himself. Again, Charlie Jones being Charlie Jones, uh, targeted 14 times, 11 catches, 188 with a touchdown. And, you know, guys, uh, I chronicled the points Purdue left on the board today. First drive of the game, Purdue gets to the 11-yard line, just gets some points, fourth and three. They skew the field goal. They go for it. Dylan down and gets stopped a yard short. Jeff Brom, I asked him about that. He said that was a mistake on his part. He thought it was fourth and one. Uh, of course, uh, we saw Purdue get the extra point block. There's another point. We saw Purdue go for a two-point conversion where it didn't get. So I, I guess you add it up, you're looking at five or six possible points. Purdue uh, left itself shy of it. And what was a three-point loss? And, again, special teams. Um, a missed field goal by Mitchell Fenneran from come about 40 yards. A head shaker to me, and we had a kickoff out of bounds late in the game. Yeah, too brutal. Um, yeah. And again, a block, a block extra point that almost turned into a disaster if Paul Perferi doesn't run that guy down about the, what, 20, 25 yard line. It's a huge so, play Perferi made. <laughs> yeah. We could sit and make a laundry list of, of reasons why they lost. Pretty was that close to winning. But like Brian said, there's, 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 there's things that need to get buttoned up to, to beat good teams. And Purdue's not there yet. You know, I, I, I asked the players this after the game, too. You know, there's – you know, you want to try to find something positive coming out of this this crushing loss. And you're still just only one in the Big Ten, right? I guess you can come home, beat Florida Atlantic, be two and two, and then you still got the rest of your Big Ten slate ahead of you. So, I guess there's, there's still plenty to play for, obviously. But, boy, a game like today, you really want to jump off a roof, don't you? Yeah. You know, it's a situation too, where, uh, you don't, I always say this in my own personal life, when you make a mistake or you really mess something up, don't compound the error. Well, they did that against Penn state and they compounded the error again today. And, and they did that throughout the course of the game. Yeah. in Florida Atlantic, which we, we don't need to get into that will not be a picnic because Florida Atlantic could score. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they will find out how they do tonight against uh, central Florida, but, uh, that will not be an, a walk in the park, especially with Purdue's mental state. Brian, uh, you know, we've watched some games over the years and, uh, uh, this ranks up there, but in terms of, uh, you know, unbelievable finishes, but what does it say? You know, it is it is a it is a little bit of a trend that 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 uh, the coaching staff and Jeff Brown would be the first to admit they got to break this trend of, of shooting themselves in the rear end and and self inflicted wounds that are costing you games. I know it's a part of the process of coaching, and that's what happens. If, and it's not all on them, but but still, uh, this is a process that Jeff Brown as he matures into. You know, there's a lot to like about this team too. I mean, they played, they 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 did some really good things uh, throughout the course of the game today, and and looked good. But uh, you gotta, you cannot beat yourself. And uh, that, uh, as Jeff Brown said, it, it, you have to take a, you have to take the blame for that if you're the head coach. Yeah, I do have a lot of points to make here, and not a lot of, uh, I'm not a lot of time to make them. Um, so I'll try to condense my thoughts here. Uh, you know, Purdue's got to give itself margin for error at the end. If things at the end of these games isn't going to go well, you got to get touchdowns on the board. Uh, yeah, I, I actually liked yeah. the fourth down going for it to start the game because it, it said, hey, we're playing for touchdowns here. Obviously, it didn't work out that way, but they've – what was the score at halftime? Nine to six? Nine, nine to three. three. Nine, nine, nine to three. three. This should not have been a nine to three football game. Purdue's got to get – should have been this 16 is an to three. Yeah. This is an offensive program. You aren't built to win – you know, 12 to eight or whatever it is. Uh, obviously the final score ended up differently than that, but you got to get points on the board one way or another. And I get that, you know, you're breaking in new receivers. I get King to out all that stuff. Um, but you've got the quarterback, you've got to get, 
you got to get points on the board. You got to get in a situation here where the weight of the world isn't on your defense's shoulder in the second half. You got to get in a position here where Aiden O'Connell can afford to make a mistake. And obviously that was a huge mistake he made in the second half, but it mattered way more because Purdue, you know, points were so hard for Purdue to come by when they were moving the football. They've just got to find ways to get points on the board, whether that's making the sort of big plays they didn't make until the second half, whether that's finishing off drives with touchdowns, better red zone offense. I don't know, but um, all those little points that added up, they didn't have to matter as much as they did. Uh, Purdue's just got to get more points on the board. They've got to, you know, realize their identity as a, as a, as a high scoring, you know, high flying sort of, sort of program. Um, I thought, you know, I like them going for it on fourth down to start the game because it showed aggressiveness, but I thought Purdue's aggressiveness was kind of selective and kind of spotty. Like, I, I don't know why Purdue didn't use a timeout there at the end of the end of the first half when they have Syracuse right, that's third and critical. 15. You have faith in your kicker. Obviously, Mitchell Finneran missed the big field goal there in the second half, but if you had 15 more seconds or 20 more seconds, you know, uh, obviously, you don't know how things would have turned out, but you had a chance to maybe do something there, but Purdue seemed okay with just kind of getting halftime up nine to three, which, you know, maybe set a bit of a, a, a strange tone for the second half. I don't know, but Purdue's just got to get more points on the board. They, that That's, you're in this trend here where, where, you know, the defense plays well for the first half. They play well into the second half. But Purdue doesn't have a big lead or a robust lead or a meaningful lead because the offense isn't getting isn't getting it done on the scoreboard. And then you put the defense in this position where one missed tackle, one big play you give up, whatever it might be, just breaks your back. And uh, they just need margin for error. They just need more points on the board. And they just need to not beat themselves, too, when it comes down to it. But in the perfect world, you'd have more points on the scoreboard at the end of these games. So... Um, some of those little things don't matter quite as much. Yeah, I think it's a true statement, and uh, it's coming out uh, uh, clearly in, in what's going on. All right, uh, Tom, we've kind of hit on that a little bit on the front end, but uh, you go from here, and you got to turn the page. You got to get home, and and uh, you know Minnesota's kicking the heck out of opponents. Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on with Wisconsin, but uh, there's still some challenges ahead. There are ga- some games, certainly Minnesota in two weeks. Uh, potentially Wisconsin, where you can change the course of the season and maybe hard to make up for this one, but yet, uh, you know, it is conference play. There's still, as you mentioned, still out there. And and there are times that I would agree with Brian and both, both of you said this team shows that it's good enough. It showed it. I thought it did some really good things defensively, shut down Sean Tucker almost completely. Yeah. Um, that was impressive in its own right. Um, uh, you know, and they, you know, and Garrett Schrader hurt them certainly, uh, but uh, not didn't kill them throwing the football. And look at the numbers, and except at the end, uh, help me make make sense of this, Tom. That's uh, what I'm trying to I'm grasping for. Yeah, so like Brian alluded to, I think the defense has played well enough for Purdue to have won all of its games, and um, it's it's the offense that sort of has gone a little bit of fits and starts early on. They were they were. More abundant in the third quarter today, guys. I think they had less yeah. than 100 yards. And through the first three quarters of the game, Purdue only had nine points. So there you go. The fourth quarter, we had 42 combined points, 20 for Purdue and 22 for Syracuse. So, um, yeah, a little more more consistency. Consistency. And Brian talked about margin of error. Um, Purdue needs to be more productive offensively early on to build a lead so the defense doesn't have to play perfection play to perfection or have its back against the wall with a do or die and drive they got to stop in order to preserve a game. So uh, still plenty to work for, but still plenty to build on. I think there is a, there is a lot of positives about the team moving forward. And, and again, Alan, you talked about the Big Ten, uh, the Big Ten West in particular. I think there's plenty of opportunity there still for Purdue to make some hay. I don't want to throw a parade for Minnesota just yet. They played nobody. Yeah, Eska's obviously off the rails. Iowa's got a work in progress. I mean, Wisconsin's a work in progress. So, again, um, these, these losses hurt. I, I don't want to diminish that. But, again, um, if you try to zoom out a little bit and try to gain some perspective and cast your eyes forward, there's still a lot to play for in, 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 a, in, a, in a division where there's a lot of possibilities for Purdue. 
to maybe still make a run if it can get things buttoned up. Anybody else, Brian, that stood out? I thought that uh, uh, at times uh, uh, Bryce Hampton really was impressive, um, and they and, and they got a lot out of him today on the, from the defensive side of the ball. Um, no, I'm sorry, Reese Taylor, not Bryce Hampton, but uh, in terms of that. But what 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 else? Anybody else that uh, stood out? Because you know, there's something to build on as you look ahead uh, from this football team. Uh, I liked what they did with Payne Durham. I liked what they did with Tyron yeah. Tracy. I, I thought Purdue came in with a, a really, a real focus on getting those two guys involved. And obviously, the results kind of spoke for themselves. I don't know if Tyron Tracy ended up with the same numbers, but I yeah. think he masked their lack of a running game early in the game. And I, I, I think he made some plays for him. And I think he's going to be a huge piece of this offense moving forward. I do want to say something completely unrelated to your question. Um, I'm in this weird position as a opinion giver. When I don't blame the refs for Purdue losing, the people who are happy or the the people who are positive rip me. When I do blame the refs for them losing, the people who are unhappy rip me. Uh, I do want to say the officials had some pretty sketchy moments here. Uh, not exactly in Purdue's favor. I, th I thought the pass interference um, on the turnover was, you know, tough. I thought the fumble was was tough. I thought the when Deion Burks got got pushed in the chest and it wasn't a PI call, I think that one didn't matter yeah. at the end because of uh I think Purdue got a first down and ended up scoring a touchdown. But I thought there were some really tough calls that went against Purdue here. Obviously, uh I don't have to tell the fan base about that because I do read my Twitter mentions. I do read against my better judgment. I do read my Twitter mentions. Um so I do want to <laughs> add that Purdue did play against some things here. That doesn't change what happened in the final two minutes of the game. I can't speak to what Payne Durham may or may not have said. I can't speak to what Jeff Brown may or may not have said to get those personal foul calls. Irregardless, those kind of things cannot happen if you want to close out games like that. But I thought that, uh, to get back to your question, I thought that Payne Durham you know, was looked like an All-American today. I mean, he was what Purdue needs Payne Durham to be all season long, You know, short of obviously that last penalty kind of looms large, but that that's, that's irrelevant to how he played today. Um, but I, I thought he was really, really good. And I thought Charlie Jones, once again, at some point in time, somebody's going to hold him under 100 yards, right? I mean, it, it's going to have to happen. And <laughs> I, I don't want, I don't want people to be shocked when it does happen. It's just naturally, uh, he's just dominating right now. And um, it's been an absolute revelation for Purdue. Um, so I think offensively, you did a lot of good things, but you got to put points on the board. You can't, you know, no one's going to beat their chest over Aiden O'Connell thrown for 415 yards when you only scored uh what was the final score 32 29 20 29 yeah 32 29 you could have had yeah but you had nine points at halftime yep. you, yeah you could have had you could have had quarters. 24 probably i i don't know yeah. the way you moved yeah. the ball in the first half you should have had more points than you had um so yeah that well yeah you look at the numbers and uh obviously charlie jones playing his way to first you know all-american right now i mean it'd be hard to hard to argue with that he's been phenomenal 11 catches 188 yards paying pain durham nine for 83 two touchdowns uh as you mentioned uh o'connell 39 of 55 for 424 you know, he didn't run the ball, you know, only got 61 yards in rushing, but Devin Mockaby did have a big touchdown run. Um, Tyrone Tracy had five catches uh, today as well, um, only a long attempt, but you get the sense that he's going to be able to do it. Tom, you asked earlier about some of the more devastating losses and, and not to, to rub salt in the wound, but I the games that came to mind to me were that I mentioned on the post-game radio show, three games, three losses to Notre Dame, but when Breeze, 98, 2000, 2002, when – Purdue had chances, uh, uh, games, all of those three of those, they really had those games won, it seemed. Uh, but not as quirky as this one. And I, I go all the way back to a game in 1983 against Wisconsin, which no one no one probably remembers but me, but a uh, crazy game and from that standpoint. But this ranks up there with that, and it will take a lot of discipline, I think, for Purdue to, to get itself righted. And as Brian, I think, you talked about, you both have talked about the fact that next time you're in this position, you need Mark margin for error but let's say you're leading by 10 up at minnesota in the third quarter you, you can't make those mistakes that uh, down the stretch that uh, that cost you dearly yeah like i said they're going to have their opportunities and yeah you uh, your uh, perspective on history is always always something i appreciate alan and just to keep it in the in the jeff brom era yeah some of the ones that stick with me are 
2018 Eastern Michigan at home watching those guys just methodically drive down the field and set up for a winning field goal late. Uh, what was obviously a crusher um, game in Nevada to start. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Uh, then, uh, was you know, this one, obviously, the, the home game against Wisconsin in 2018, I think, yeah, looked the like they had up late yeah. and, then they, and then they go to OT and then they lose to Jonathan Taylor's. Yeah. Probably still running for 300 yards. <laughs> yeah. But again, I guess you don't want to always dwell on the negative here, even though I can kind of fall into that crack, especially after games like this. Um, try to keep things in perspective. And and we've talked about a lot of very good things. Uh, again, it's just, you know, discipline came up in the post game with Jeff Brom. Is there a discipline problem? How do you fix not getting penalties? Um you know, it's a, you got to be detail oriented. And Charlie Jones talked about staying true to your technique when I asked him about it. Sort of a nebulous thing, isn't it? You can't get baited into penalties. Payne Durham was shoved and he shoves back. He exchanges words. Just things you can't do. Uh, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, it's just something you would think older guys wouldn't be as susceptible to. You do get caught up in the emotion of games, guys. I'll tell you what, man. It felt like this game was played inside of a drum. I've never been in a louder venue in my life. Um, it was just – it wasn't even close to being packed either. Yeah, I know. That's what was interesting. Yeah. Not really at all. No, it, it was a you know, plenty of it, but it, was, it felt like there were about 100,000 people in here. And it was a good atmosphere, and they, they get after it. And when they get some mojo going, the roof almost lifts off this place. So uh, you can see why it can be a difficult place to win. Yeah. The other one was right, Brian, the Brian, game at Minnesota. Brian, last word. Hey, Durham, yeah. Yeah. Offensive PI. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, but when we look back on some of these difficult losses, the one that jumps out is Nevada. And you can make a case that kind of ruined Purdue's season. Because oh, I, now, absolutely I, that's probably ruined a bold the statement, but that obviously put them off to a really, really bad start uh, to the season. You had that one won. You let it get away. I think the officials really hurt Purdue in that one, too. I'll take that one to my grave. Uh, because the interception by Kenneth Major, I thought, should have stood. And I can't remember what the other play was, but um, it doesn't matter anymore, obviously. But that set a really bad tone. <laughs> that set a yeah. really bad tone to a season that ended up very badly. Yeah. And what Purdue's got to do now is whatever that was that happened in the last two minutes of this game, whatever that lack of composure was, whatever that little meltdown that everybody watching on TV saw with flags flying everywhere, that's got to get out of their system now. That cannot yeah. bleed into next week. That cannot bleed into practice tomorrow or Monday whenever they go back to practice because they got to they got to get some things straight here. They gave one away uh, at Syracuse. They could have had one at Penn State against Penn State very easily. They got to reset things here. They got to get their heads on right, and they got to make sure that that lack of whatever it was in the final few minutes of this game, the final minute of this game, yeah, you know, isn't something isn't that's going to define this team from here on out. Because if it does. They're going to have a. They're not going to have anywhere near the season they want to have, or they're capable of having. Which is funny because the face of this team is Aiden O'Connell, and he is. And he's been pic- terrific. He is this picture of poise and composure. Yeah. The the the, the would have been game winning touchdown drive came on the heels of him throwing as bad of an interception, as egregious a quarterback mistake as you can make. That was totally Drew Brees against Ohio State years ago. He throws the game away and then he takes it right back. Aiden O'Connell is everything Purdue needs to be, but was not in the final few minutes of this game. Aiden O'Connell aside, obviously. Yeah, he was terrific in my view. And uh, yeah, he had the one mistake. Drew Brees threw four interceptions in that game against Ohio State, if uh, if my yeah. memory serves. And I think that that's right. And I would agree that, and, and maybe my last word, Nevada, Nevada, that not only ruined the season, but ruined kind of the mojo of the, uh, of the just the way that the, the, everything went. I understand Sindelar and, and Rondale Moore got hurt on the same play against that Minnesota was, and yeah, all that Minnesota, stuff. Yeah. 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 And so I get all that, but it just affected the way they did, the way the coaching staff kind of looked at things and some of the other stuff in my view. And, and uh, that, as you, as you both have said, you cannot let that happen. All right, guys. Uh, I don't know whether there's anything more to say on this. Uh, we appreciate uh, both of you, Tom, safe travels back to West Lafayette and um, we will look forward to another episode of this next week. It may be Sunday morning, before it will be Sunday morning by definition, whether we do it right after the game or whenever, but uh, after Florida Atlantic, because that is a night game, obviously.
and 30. The first uh, homecoming game in Purdue history on the, at night. And Purdue takes, takes on the Florida Atlantic Owls. All right. So I want to thank the Union Club Hotel. The, ooh, again. Ooh. Yeah. See, you got to have a sense of humor. I got to I, I have a sense of humor through all this. So that's why I, I, I got appreciate a whole week. I got a whole week to use that joke. So, <laughs> And you almost you got it. me again. And you almost got me again on it. That's what I, I almost I almost bit. All right, guys. Have a good one. And, uh, again, thank you all for watching, listening, however you uh, – navigate and 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 digest or i don't know what's the word you use i miss it every time process uh, process process our process i'll get that before we're the seasons our, our our materials we're grateful for all of you and with the union club hotel as well for all their spot their sponsorship and all that they do for us so have a great week everybody be safe and we'll look forward to another edition of saturday simulcast uh, next week after the purdue florida atlantic game take care everybody